je m'appelle Aïssa Tout Diallo et je viens d'un petit village au nom du Burkina Faso qu'on appelle Katari. J'ai 13 ans, je vis avec ma mère et mon grand frère et une sèvre domestique appelée Doumare. Je suis la première de ma famille à aller à l'école. Avant l'école Bright, l'école la plus proche était à 4 heures de mars de Katiari à Dori. M'envoyer à l'école Bright fit une idée de ma grand-mère. Elle a dit à ma mère qui a demandé à mon père, mais mon, mais mon père, père à son âme, voulait que je reste à la maison pour garder les sèvres. Il était tous les temps malade et avait besoin d'aide. Mais ma grand-mère a parlé à un vieux du village et la vieille de la rentrée, il est venu à la maison et a dit qu'il faut que Aïsatou y aille. Même après ça, mon père n'était pas convaincu que l'école soit une bonne chose. Il me disait souvent que si je restais quelques jours à la maison, ils vont barrer mon nom de l'école et que je n'aurais plus besoin d'aller. Je répondais simplement « Oui, Abba, j'irai aujourd'hui et on verra demain. » Et le lendemain, je disais la même chose. C'est ainsi que j'ai pu finir des années sans manquer un seul jour de classe. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, mon père serait fier de moi. Lorsque je finirai l'école, je voudrais devenir docteur. Je montrerai à mes amis et parents que l'école est très utile. C'est grâce à l'école que je sais lire, écrire et calculer. Je remercie la première dame des États-Unis, le peuple américain, M. Daniel Johannes et le MCC et mon pays. C'est grâce à eux que je suis allé pour la première fois à Ouagadougou, la capitale de Burkina Faso, et que je suis en Amérique pour fêter la journée internationale de la femme. Je veux que l'école Bright continue d'aider mon pays pour qu'aucune fille ne reste à la maison et que toutes les filles aient la chance que j'ai eu d'avoir accès à l'éducation. My name is Aïssa Diallo and I come from a small village in the northern part of Burkina Faso called Kachari. I'm 13 years old. I live with my mother, older brother, and my pet goat named Dumare. I'm the first person in my family to attend school. <laughs> Before the Bright School, the closest school to Kachari was four hours away in Dori. Sending me to the Bright School was my grandmother's idea. My father, may his soul rest in peace, was sick and wanted me to stay home and help him with the goats. But my grandmother spoke to a village elder and he came to my house and insisted that I go. But even after that day, my father would often say to me that if I would just stay home for a few days, they would cross my name off that list and I wouldn't have to go to school anymore. I would tell him, okay, Abba, but I will go just today and we'll see about tomorrow. <laughs> and then the next day I would say the same thing. That's how I finished my first two years without missing any days. But I think today my father would be very proud of me. When I finished... <laughs> <clears throat> When I finish school, I want to become a doctor. I will show my relatives and friends that school is important and useful. It's because of school that I can read and write and do math. I'm the first in my family to do so. Thank you, Mrs. Obama, the American people, Mr. Daniel Johannes, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, and my government. It is because of the Bright School of Kachari that I'm even here today with you, celebrating the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day. It is because of MCC and my government of Burkina Faso that I was able to visit my capital, Ouagadougou, and the capital of the USA, Washington, D.C. I want the Bright Schools of Burkina to, fit, to continue so that no girls are left at home and all of them can have the chances that I have had to receive an education. <laughs>
Exciting, exciting day, exciting. We had a, a fabulous morning at the State Department, and I hope you all are having just a lot of fun here this evening. We are just honored and delighted to have you here um, to celebrate International Women's Day and Women's History Month here at the White House. Yes. I have to start by thanking uh, Aisutu for that beautiful, beautiful introduction and for all her hard work. C'est très bien, merci. <laughs> we have to give her another round of applause. <laughs> and also Shannon uh, for her inspiring way of being and uh, for introducing uh, uh, our, our choir and for her, her extraordinary achievements. So let's give her a round of applause as well. And I got to hear a little bit of that fabulous choir, the Washington Performing Arts Society. We have to thank them for that inspirational performance as well. Uh, and I know that we have so many wonderful people here. We have some members of Congress who are here. I see some faces scattered around. Uh, and I, I want to thank uh, all of you for all the work that you do, the leadership that you provide, the time that you have taken out in your lives to fight uh, for the issues that mean so much, not just for women and girls here in this country, but around the world. We are proud of you. I am proud of you. Thank you so much. Uh, and finally, uh, I want to recognize all of the extraordinary women uh, who are gathered here tonight because there are, are so many uh, sprinkled in about, including our, our wonderful Women of Courage Award recipients, uh, all of whom I got to spend time with earlier today. These are women who work tirelessly, all of you, every day to make uh, not just countries more fair, more equal, and more free, but often uh, many of these women uh, risk themselves and their families uh, to get this work done. Uh, we have young women here like Shannon and Aistu who are serving as peacemakers and ambassadors and community leaders here in America and around the world. Uh, and I see so many activists and advocates, pioneers who have devoted their careers to improving the lives of women. We are celebrating you all today. And tonight, I just want to say uh, to all of you that your journeys, that your achievements, and your very presence in this room uh, are a perfect illustration of the progress that we've made uh, since this day was first celebrated 100 years ago. We've come a long way, ladies. <laughs> and we are celebrating those accomplishments here in America. Women are now the majority of graduates uh, of colleges and universities. Uh, we make up nearly half of America's workforce. We got to get paid more for it, <laughs> but we do. Women are thriving in every sector of our society. Uh, we are leading businesses. Uh, we're serving at the highest levels of government and the armed forces. Uh, we're breaking barriers and succeeding in careers that our mothers and grandmothers never could have imagined. And as more opportunities have become open to women, uh, that hasn't just enriched our own lives. Uh, as we all know, it's enriched the life of this nation. And that's one of the reasons why we have to do this, because we need to remind uh, ourselves and our country uh, that we're here because of us. Uh, because we as a nation benefit from every girl whose potential is fulfilled. Uh, from every woman whose talent is tapped, we benefit as a nation. 
We as a nation benefit from their intelligence, from their hard work, from their creativity, from their leadership. And that's not just true here in America. Time and again, we have seen that countries across the globe are more prosperous, they're more peaceful when women are more equal uh, and have the rights and opportunities they deserve. And that is why women and girls are a core focus of America's engagement with the world, including our diplomatic and uh, development work uh, and our work to prevent and respond to conflict. And that's why here at home, uh, we continue our work to close the pay gap once and for all, to get that done. Uh, that's why we continue our work here at home to bring women into fields like math and science. Keep studying your math. Uh, where we're still underrepresented, so we still have work to do. We continue our work to promote, to promote entrepreneurship and work flex, place flexibility uh, so that women can contribute as fully as, a, as possible to our economy. And while we've made some important strides, all of you in this room knows better than anyone else that this work is far from finished. We have so, so much more to do. You all know better than just about anyone that what change is hard uh, and change is slow. Uh, many of you might not win the battles you're fighting or see the progress you're fighting for in your lifetimes. You know that. But I'm thinking tonight of a quote from the author Alice Walker who uh, once wrote, so our mothers and grandmothers have more often than not anonymously handed on the creative spark the seed of the flower they themselves never hope to see. And that is why all of you keep on fighting. That's why all of you keep on leading and working toward a better day for all of us. You do it so that our daughters and granddaughters, and, and just as importantly, our sons and grandsons, uh, can have the opportunities that many of us only dreamed of. You do it because you know that your work could be the spark or that seed for the dreams and aspirations of girls like Isatu and, and Shannon, generations from, from now. This is why we do this work. We do it for you. We do it for you. So I want to close tonight by simply saying thank you. Uh, this is a small, very small way uh, for, for me, for my husband, for this administration, uh, to let you know just how proud we are of all that you do for women and girls. Our work is so far from done, uh, but a hundred years ago, we would have never imagined that we'd be standing here in the East Room <laughs> of the White House celebrating this day with this administration. So we have reason to celebrate. So thank you all for your commitment. Thank you for your passion. I am so honored to have you here tonight. Enjoy, eat, drink, dance. Oh. I'm only standing on your shoulders. So please enjoy and, and God bless. We have more work to do. Thanks so much.